talking? Cedric, we have to get back to the cup. Now! What are you talking about? Who are you? What do you want? Kill the spare! Avada Kedavra! No! no. <laughs> Welcome to my channel. Yeah. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Cedric. I am an actor, a filmmaker, a screenwriter, and a YouTube reactor. We are continuing our journey into the Bangtan universe. I, as always, want to thank my patrons for being amazing, amazing. I also, as always, want to thank Say What Reacts for uh, the guide through the BTS universe. I'm having so much fun with all of you exploring this. I just want to ask again. In fact, I'll even beg. I'm not above begging. I'm really not. Please don't spoil this. Please. If there is something that you think I should know, and you have to ask yourself, hey, is that a spoiler? Then... You probably shouldn't say it. I appreciate your consideration. My guest on my podcast this week is John Zeller. He is a cinematographer and editor out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It was it went long, so it's going to be two episodes, but we talk about cinematography, um, how you might shoot a scene. So we kind of walk through a theoretical scene and approach, you know, how would we shoot it? What would we start with? That kind of thing. So if you're interested in cinematography, that should be fun. We also talk about the Snyder Cut. So, uh, you know, check that out wherever you get your podcast. It's called the All the World Podcast. As it's getting warmer, I hope uh, you're enjoying, at least it's getting warmer here on the East Coast of the United States. Uh, I hope you're enjoying that warmth. Please get outside, get some fresh air, but also stay healthy and stay safe. I haven't said this in a while. Like, pull your shoulders back, take deep breaths, fix your posture. Let's do this together. Let's, let's be healthy together. I don't know if any of you noticed, but I wore my Quidditch jersey. Yeah, this is my Quidditch jersey from college. I was a chaser. Not saying we were good, but um, well, we never lost a game. So, go stag charge. <laughs> that was weird, sorry. Big hit. Entertainment. Hmm. Is this the Snyder Cut? Okay, back to the birds flying. Okay. <laughs> I got over halfway through that before pausing. What a mesmerizing music video. Just absolutely fascinating. This setup of uh, the chain link fences, which looks like a labyrinth of some kind. Um, and it almost seems like they aren't aware that the other's in there. Which, again, with my theory that maybe some of them aren't real or they're functioning on different levels of reality. 
Um, you know, if they aren't aware that they're there, I mean, the, the lyrics that I paused on are literally, I run so lost in this maze. Um, so yeah, it's a maze. This is the most explicit reference back to the previous music videos that I've seen. I mean, it's a literal footage of it. But what's interesting is they've taken that footage, which we've seen as kind of pure the way that it was shot, and they've put this kind of old style sort of VCR effect on it as if we're watching found footage. Like, uh, not dissimilar to the way that, for example, um, Blair Witch Project was shot. It's, it's a found footage type thing. Um, which makes me wonder, is this Jin's reality that we are in here? It's called Epilogue, Young Forever. If I uh, am on the right track with my youth versus maturity um, theme and trying to find a balance between the two, uh, light and dark, youth, maturity, then is this labyrinth Jin's mind? We started with him. And it was really tight on him. We had those gorgeous shallow depth of field shots as his hand trailed along the chain link fence, creating all these lines for us to look at, creating so much gorgeous motion for us to watch that you almost forget to watch him in his performance, which was equally lost. And I don't think sad. I think it was scared. I think his performance was scared. Uh, so why would we start on him and then start going to the others? Then we start seeing memories of the others. Well, in the same effect that we saw on the memories that we saw of the shot of Jungkook sitting in the room after um, the mirror gets broken and of the shot that we saw of, you know, I, I can't recycle every single shot, but V as he's running off the thing and jumps into the water and then we see him in the water. That same effect is what they used on the title sequence when it said Young Forever and then it clarified to be clear. Well, now we're sort of reversing that. We're seeing them and then we're seeing the footage or we're seeing the footage and then them. But not for all of them, because then we're seeing the pill bottle on the ground. And then we see J-Hope. So again, it makes me wonder, are certain members real and others aren't? Are certain members projections of other members? You know, they're doing a really good job of hiding that. Even just look at the shot that I paused on here, just to talk cinematography for a moment. Vertical lines are obvious, but what gorgeous structure to have it really nicely flatly framed and then you've got this nice circle coming up into it a line at the bottom like stuff like that that raises your value and, and makes it just more visually interesting guides the eye it makes us feel lost but we're also getting a bird's eye view of it we're getting an over top view we are meant as an audience to be cognizant of more than the viewers are which is great because they obviously know more than us too. So they're trying to put us in a position of power and knowledge over the subjects. But by doing that, they give us a false confidence that we know what's going on. We don't, and that's the point. But we're sort of at this point having a, this is sort of a recap. This is like if you're watching a, you know, season two of something that like previously on the Bangtan universe. That's, that's sort of what this is functioning as so far. I don't feel like I've seen anything that necessarily moves it forward. Sure, we have the feathers falling down, the pills that are still there, but that tells me that this is some sort of heightened world that they're in. So before that shot was pushing forward, now it's coming back. So again, we're slipping into this memory. Nice. So some of them are getting out of the maze. So V's the last one. Oh, oh what a cool shot. I like, I'm starting to be able to recognize their names. Okay, so we're on a landing strip of some kind. This is reminiscent of the beach now. I know that the Wings short films are next, 
And so I'm really intrigued by that because, frankly, I'm not entirely sure what all I just saw. There was a lot going on. I probably should have paused more than I did. But, again, I was waiting for something to happen. And I think that that's sort of the trick of it is that nothing was necessarily going to happen. I do want to talk beyond the Bangtan universe of the lyrics that I was noticing, talking about empty stages and, um, you know, will the audience still be there essentially is kind of what I was hearing. Um, that is a reality for performers. That's a reality that I have to deal with is that um, there's a shelf life to performing. Uh, I'm I'm sort of in between my mid and late 20s and I'm really aging out of that time when I can play high school roles. Okay, well, that's closing me off to a whole thing, and I'm starting to age into sort of young father parts. Uh, and there's a sort of impermanence that exists within that. And you think about, um, you know, a lot of the derogatory comments that you hear made about BTS of, oh, well, when they get older, the fans are going to leave them behind. Things that I've seen that are, of course, on their face ridiculous, but that doesn't quell the anxiety of the performer. Because when you are a performer, so much of your success and your future is dictated by the opinions of random people on the internet. There's a profound impact to that. There's a lack of control um, within the performance industry. Uh, and at the same time, I feel like there's sort of a stepping back in this music video. I feel like there was a stepping back from the characters that we've seen in the music videos so far and more themselves um, being lost in this maze. And I assume the maze is maybe part of that Nirvana state, that state between, you know, uh, death and rebirth. It's a journey to go and then you, you get to take off, you get to be free, you get to run. With that, it's important to know that performers are personas. The best example I can think of is Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus, right? Sorry, Hannah Montana and Miley Cyrus um, were two different people on that show. Uh, but at the same time, they, they were one in the same. In the same way that, and I, I'm sorry, I don't know all of their names, uh, their, their real life names. I know their stage names. There's a persona aspect. I mean, there's a persona aspect to the way that I do these videos. Now, I try to be genuinely me, but at the same time, it's not like when I watch movies by myself, uh, I'm sitting there commenting the whole time. Uh, I'm not describing out loud. I'm trying to externalize my thoughts, but that inherently makes this a performance, right? Because I'm doing something that I wouldn't normally do. That inherently makes this a performance in the same way that um, in that intro when I'm doing the, hey, Uncle Kenny, football, yeah, right? Like that, that was a performance. It was an over-the-top, ridiculous, big comedic thing. Um, that's still grounded in some central aspect of me, and that's you're getting into performance and acting theory, which I do love to talk about. Um, but within that, I feel like this was more reserved and pulled back. It was less of a linear story and more of a reestablishing of who and what and where we are, which is important, especially when you're telling such a complex story that involves so many things. You have to step back and remind the audience of this is where we are. This is who we are. This is what's going on. Well, something like this, if we start getting into mixed realities, well, this was a nice way to step back and remind us and catch us up. This is what's happened. But also, I'm certain, I am absolutely certain that at some point in a future video, I'm going to watch it and go, oh, that was the point of the thing in Epilogue. That was what that was about. But this felt like the final chapter, or I guess the final paragraph of the opening chapter of this universe. Um, it was kind of like, here's the characters that you've met. Here are some significant events. Here are the key things to remember. J-Hope and Pills. I think it was sugar and feathers. I'll have to go back through. I'll make some notes as I go to remember everything. But remembering these key aspects and, and little things about the performance. Like at the end when they were on the runway, Jim Min turned around and looked at, uh, I guess it was probably a drone that was getting the shot, turned around and looked at the drone. Well, so far, Jim Min's purpose largely in these videos has been to be in water and to turn around and look at the camera. Well, what does that tell us? It tells us that he probably knows something because he's breaking the fourth wall with us. V has also looked at the camera, but not in a sense that he knows that it's there. It doesn't feel like he's looking at the camera. It feels like he's looking at something versus Jamin, who feels like he's looking at the camera, looking at us, looking at the audience. And that is important. 
that is important. Who is serving as a sort of anchor for us? Who's serving as a point of reference? We know that Jin is separate from the group, so he's serving as an anchor through which we can view the rest. But what else is going on that's trying to tell us something about these characters? That is really important to pay attention to. RM seems really chilly, feels like he's not fully a part of it, but he's kind of hovering on the edge of the group, sort of a protecting situation. I talked about J-Hope sort of feeling like a, a parental figure so far. So this felt like an important point to step back and anchor who they are and where they are and what we've seen so that as we step away from the music videos and get into the wings, it gives us that frame of reference. You know, it's a reminder, fix your posture. Mine was getting bad. Fix your posture, pull your shoulders back. Let's go, be healthy. Uh, it gives us that point of reference. Acting is such a vital part of storytelling that I need to address that. And even, let's just do a quick, we're gonna do a quick acting lesson. So again, skip past this if you don't care, but note some of the things that they're doing. If I want to say something uh, when I'm performing, and I do this as a person too, because you take lessons as an actor and it starts to kind of ingrain in your personality. When I want to say something that I really want people to listen to, I tend to not blink. I tend to not blink and I tend to not even really shift my eyes. I just tend to look in one spot. And sometimes when I'm doing these videos, I might look back and forth between the camera and the computer, but you'll note when I really get going on a roll, I tend to not blink as much because that's just become a part of me. But because as an actor, if I really want you to listen to what I am saying, I'm not going to blink because it makes my character stronger because the eyes are the window to the soul. The eyes are the key to acting, especially on film. So I'm not going to blink. I'm going to keep it very steady. I might shift to look at something else, but even then when I come back, it's going to be very controlled versus if I want to seem more weak, more afraid, I might flicker my eyes a little bit more. I might blink a little bit more. I might move my head a little bit more. And you'll note key differences between, especially in V's performance, and I know V is, is, you know, he's acted a lot from my understanding. He's doing a lot of this. He's alternating between them. Jin is doing a lot of this kind of looking up, right? There's a lot of this going on. So there's a lot of acting technique that's being used to really subtly hint at the mental and emotional states of the characters. It goes beyond like, oh, I'm happy. Oh, I'm sad, right? Sadness can be shown just like this. Sadness can be shown just like this. That's all it has to be because music and camera and lighting and costume are going to play into the rest of it. This is all it has to be. It's such a subtle, it's a shut. Mm, speak, Cedric. It's a subtle shift, but they are employing it really, really well to keep it visual and to keep you interested and to develop their characters for us because, especially because they don't have dialogue to inform their characters for us. So, Anyway, to this video, I, that was a whole tangent. I'm so sorry for wasting seven minutes of your time, but I hope you enjoyed learning something maybe about acting. I think the chain link fences are interesting because that's a situation where you literally could have just climbed the fence and looked out and found your way out, but they didn't. They were working through the maze. They were working together at times. It looked like, you know, I said at one point, I'm not sure they're aware of each other, but then at another point, it seemed like maybe they were. Um, but you'll note that they each sort of encountered their own, this sounds stupid, but their own experience within the maze, which is so funny that I had decided to do that Harry Potter intro with the maze from Goblet of Fire before this. Um, and then I watch it and it's about a maze with each of them encountering, sort of like in the book, each of them encountering some sort of challenge that engages them on their character's level. What are the odds of that? Extraordinarily low. I feel like I, I missed a lot in this video. Um, but that's okay because that's the point of this, right? You're going to miss things and then, well, I'm going to miss things. You guys probably got them. And then later on, I'll feel dumb for missing it. And that's okay. Uh, it's not a rare feeling for me. So that's all I really have for you. I hope you enjoyed. It was beautifully shot. I didn't talk a ton about the cinematography, but really, I just love the shallow depth of field. I love that they didn't have clear differences between all of them. So it kind of felt like they were just running in circles. Uh, and I really love the references back. And I love the slight shifts that they did to sort of make it look retro and make it look like a memory. That's really good visual storytelling. So I cannot wait to get into these short films. I know all of you said you were excited and I'm very excited about that. So that I believe is what's up next. That'll be next week. But until then, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, stay healthy, fix your posture. Let's all just 
Let's just go be great. Be kind this week. Let's just focus on being kind. But I have a good one.